when you need five soda cans, make sure they are rinsed out or rinsed out pretty well and dry on the inside. Now we're going to go and take a razor blade. This is one that I have that is a handheld one, and these are so much better to go and use than just a normal blade. Go and cut the top of the can. After you have it at least half of the way cut, you can go and take a pair of scissors and then go and cut off the top of this can. Now, as you're cutting any of these cans, always keep in mind that this does have a sharp lip to it, so try to keep your hands away from it and try to go nice and slow as well. Go and turn your scissors or your blade and then go and cut off the bottom. Any scraps that you do end up having from this craft, make sure to go and recycle the bottoms, the tops, and pretty much any little bit of this can is recyclable after it's cut. Now go and clean any of this residue that might be in any of the cans, and after they're dried off, we're going to go and flatten them slightly. Go and take the cut piece of aluminum, fold it, make sure you don't really leave a mark in the center. Now we're going to go and cover all of these with just some sort of cloth, and we're just going to apply a small amount of heat to it with an iron or anything that you have like that. It does help to go and flatten it out just slightly. Now let's go and draw some leaves. Do these of different sizes. It should look kind of like what a teardrop looks like and cut them out. You can fit anywhere between five to about 10 of these on every one of these sheets of aluminum. As you're cutting these, go nice and slow. The edges can be very sharp on the can pieces that are cut. Now that we have all of our leaves cut out, let's go and mark it down the center with a metal tool that we have. Go and put some little branches off for the leaf that's there. And it's probably a good idea to go and have a reference up. There's a couple of ways that you can go and do this. You can either go and take this and fold it into the middle up. I will be using these for the end of my longer pieces. Or you could just have it like this where it's just slightly curved. Now that all of our leaves are shaped, let's go and cut some floral wire. I'm leaving some of these pieces a bit longer than honestly what I'm going to need, and that is more than fine because if I want to make these larger, I have at least the wire to do so. Now let's take our glue, use a very generous amount of it, put it onto the back end of one of your leaves, and then go and stick down the wire onto this piece. You might have to hold it in place for a couple of seconds, and now for this one, this is one of the pieces that I folded upwards and I'm sticking this onto the end of this piece of wire that is a lot longer than the other ones that I'm using, and it's about two and a half feet long. Now let's go and continue to glue down these pieces. And this glue does dry pretty quick, so it took about an hour and a half for it to be fully dry. Now you can go and spray paint it. I'm starting off with just a very light green base, and after that green base is done, I'm going over everything with a black that is very light. Then I'm just going to wait for this to dry, and really didn't take too long. I did this on a nice and hot day. So after this side is dried, which I honestly still wanted some of the can to be showing at the bottom, I think it looks kind of cool. Now onto the other side, use green spray paint first, a small amount of yellow, and then at the edges of every one of these, use a very light amount of black spray paint. This is going to make it look a bit more plant-like, and it gives it just so much color, and these look so cool after they've dried. And I waited about a day just so everything was fully and totally dried and didn't come apart. Now I'm taking the larger leaves that I have, putting them at the top here, and I'm kind of just going down from there and continuing to go and attach all of these leaves. Now these pieces have a bunch of wire here, which is fine. I'm just going to cut them, size them a little bit, and then again, go and twist these down. Let's go and grab some wooden dowels. We're going to go and take the wire and twist it around and make sure it does hang down a good amount you're going to take at least two or maybe three of these and have them on wooden wooden dowel. Try to get it centered or close to the center. Now go and fill up your metal tin or your planter. Take the wooden dowel, go and bury it into the dirt that you have here. After it's buried, go and move the pieces of leaves around. Just go and space it slightly, make it look a little bit poofy, and also have some of these pieces hang down. Here's what it looks like so far. It looks pretty cool. And I have this one extra piece that is off to the side, so I'm taking one more wooden dowel, going and twisting it, and like I did with the other one, burying it into the dirt. Now this is what it looks like after it is done, and it honestly looks pretty real. You wouldn't even believe that this was made with aluminum cans. 
So to dive in, today's project really was inspired by another Home Talk video by Gail of Purple Hues and Me. And I wanted to show you some different ways to get the same effect and to really have fun with the idea. So you're going to want to grab yourselves some used cans, used soda bottles. You're also going to want a flower punch. You're gonna to want to open up your can first of all. Now you can use a knife or scissors, whichever you prefer. I'm gonna put my knife in. I just find the knife is easier than the scissors. And you're gonna to wanna to cut that top off. Be careful because these sides are pretty sharp. Then I like to cut down the middle and it doesn't matter where you cut, anywhere is fine. And then you're gonna to want to do the same thing again here. Once you are done all the way around, you want to fold this piece open. And the easiest way is to kind of fold it back on itself. You can also put it over the edge of a table and things as well. So just be careful because they are a little bit sharp. I just pop this inside of here. Press down. I find it easier to have my punch on the table and then press down this way. And you're going to cut out lots and lots of these flowers. You can also do it the same with an empty soda bottle as well. You don't just have to use the cans to get different effects. So go ahead and punch all of these out and then we'll do some decorating. So once you've punched out as many flowers as you want for your area, I kind of laid mine out on my canvas to make sure it fits. You'll see how it all comes together. I've added it onto a piece of press and seal because this is perfect for whether you want to paint them and you can add details with acrylic paint or I'm gonna be using uh, alcohol inks because they work really, really well with metal. And if you run out of cans and things, we did at the end, we just wanted a few extra flowers and we used some plumbing tape because it's the same, it's just a metal-based tape. So you can absolutely do that as well. So either one will work. So I'm giving it a spritz here pretty liberally with isopropyl alcohol, just first aid alcohol. And then I'm going to throw on some alcohol ink. So this is a metallic pearl alcohol ink. These are just some plain colors. And you just kind of want to add a little bit of interest. Now you could leave them silver if you like the silver color. But I kind of want to add some fun to them. So I'm just going to drop this over. And you could do all sorts of different effects. I've seen a few different variations. And uh, Gail, in her original, she did them with acrylic paint and added lots of detail to them. So you can really play around. You can make different flowers. She made hydrangeas. I'm going for more of like the daisy kind of fun look to mine. Um, just play around with whatever you want. So you can see I'm just dropping it on. It's super easy and it dries by evaporation. So you don't have to heat dry it. It dries super fast, which is nice too, because I'm definitely an impatient crafter. And I'm going for the fun kind of natural look here. So if you want to make the colors run more, you can spritz them again. It just is reactivated with alcohol as many times you want. I'm gonna put this to the side to dry. As I say, it evaporates pretty fast. But in the meantime, we can get our canvas ready to go. So I pre-cut out just using a template, this uh, little plant pot. I'm gonna use a fine liner to add a couple of details to it here. So I'm gonna make it look open at the top. And I'm gonna add some polka dots right at the end, but I don't want to do that because it'll need some time to dry. I also took this pre-printed sentiment from a paper pad I had of pre-printed sayings. Um, it's called All Season Sentiments. It's one with all sorts of different things. You'll see me use them in lots of different home talk projects and some colored cardstock. So I'm gonna stick these down on here using the same adhesive I'm gonna use for the rest of my project. This one's great because um, sticks metal, wood, paper, it dries super fast and it dries clear. So in a minute you see I'll put down quite a lot of adhesive but I won't have to worry because this iCraft will dry totally clear and you won't see any of the excess either. So that is nice. And I'm going to double mount this because I want the colors to tie together with the purple and the pink. So I stick it down evenly on two or three sides, just depending how it fits. And then I trim down to the right size. And the nice thing about using liquid is if you need to reposition a little bit, it's easy as well. 
my sweet summertime is going to go here this is going to go here and then my flowers are going to go up here as well i'm going to basically outline where i want my flowers to go so somewhere in this space is probably where they're all going to go and this canvas came black i didn't have to print it uh paint it rather i like getting some of the color canvases or try maybe the hexagon canvases they're fun too we're going to cover almost all of this with flowers so i don't have to worry and it dries clear so it'll just add a little bit of a glossy accent in the background and then i've taken my flowers and some of them i started to do this already is you just kind of want to make the little petals go up like this and i'm going to use my favorite pair of craft tweezers i like these ones because they have a hooked end they're kind of like a weeding hook and a tweezer all in one they're called, uh, I think, on the hook or off the hook tweezers. So I'm going to take some of the large ones first and stick those down. And then we can use our little ones to fill in the gaps. your arrangement um, and you're happy with it we can just add some final embellishments to our uh, vase I'm going to take a little bit of acrylic paint this is just a it's called daybreak yellow and you'll have noticed I added um, some thicker glue in places to give me a little bit of dimension I like for that power tack it's just a little bit thicker and it gives me some extra dimension so the um, thermal web dries really nice and flat and clear but when you want to pop things up and give it real dimension just add a bit of that power tag in and you could use a round sponge brush too you could paint stripes you could doodle on it you could stamp on it you can cut some vinyl you can do all sorts of fun things it's one of those really great projects you can customize any way you like and make it match your home too so if your colors are gold and blue or coral and green then you can do all sorts of fun things with that too but i'm just adding these on so there's today's projects thank you so much for watching me here at home talk and i'll see you again very soon